Welcome to another C++ tutorial. We talked about classes in the past uh, two tutorials, so if you need to get caught up on that, just go back to two on this playlist. So we have our standard uh, standard AFX.h and our iOS stream included. We have our pause function. Let's get started and make this quick and simple. What we're going to do is we're going to separate the definition from the implementation of a class. We've created classes on the fly. It's all going to be in the same file, but I want to show you how to separate them out using scoping rules. That being said, let's create this time class to keep track of time. Keyword class creates a class or an object. We're going to create this object called time to keep track of our time. And we, in we encase the uh, object with uh, the curly braces and a semicolon at the end. Now remember, every class has a public and a private section of that class. And there's also a keyword called protected we'll get into later down the road. So with our time, remember we talked about constructors a little bit. We're going to want a time constructor that just says, if you create this object, what do you do when upon creation? Okay, but we're not going to do what we did before, which was create the curly braces and put the implementation or the definition here. You know, we're not going to do that. We're just going to say to the public, there's a constructor called time. You're allowed to do this. In fact, let's create a time object that'll be that'll take in an integer, <clears throat> three integers, and then we're going to want to do a set time, and maybe take in three integers that way too. Okay, and then of course a print time or a get time, whichever way you want to do it. Print. We'll just do print for simplicity's sake, for now. Print time. That would be a void. Excuse me on that. So we're not going to return anything. We're just going to print the time. We didn't define any of these, but we're in, we're we're setting up the implementation of it. I've got the semicolon there. Sometimes when you have all this red, you get nervous, but uh, I think we're good. Yeah, looks like we're good. Oh, excuse me. Set time is going to return nothing. There we go. See, it's the little stuff that gets you all the time. All right, so we have what we want the public to be able to access. The public can say, create an object called time with no um, defaults. We can create a time object and default it to whatever integer values you set in this parameter. And we can uh, also set the time after creation, and we can print the time. And now let's keep track of our time. We're going to want an integer hour, integer minute, and probably integer second. You can do this however way you want. You can even do a date object. As a homework assignment, you can create a date object. And actually, you can have multiple classes in the same file. Just like I'm creating this class, you can create a date class. Just put it right beneath it. And there you go. You have date and time objects. And then soon we'll learn how to interrelate them. OK, so we have the, the, uh, the public member functions available here, but they're not defined. So we can define that anywhere in the program, after the main, below the main, or before the main, or after the main. Now let's just go ahead and do it after the main. So we know we have a time class, and the, the default constructor is not defined. I have it here, time. Notice there's no void or bool or integer before it. We're not returning any value, and that's kind of the unique part of um, the time syntax, or the class sy syntax you got to use. OK, so to tie your time into a definition, you got to do that below. Let's start with the constructor, which is the unique one. So you just do type in the word time, colon, colon, and you'll see this pop-up menu here. What we want to do is we want to go all the way down to the time, because we want to define the actual creation of this object. So there we go. We have it. the scoping. This time belongs to the actual class time. It's, it's doing that with these colons. You can have a time function within your date object. But it would look something more like date, your, your date, colon, colon. So it knows, hey, the time we're talking about is a time that's associated with the date object. We don't actually have a date object. We only have a time object created. So this time constructor is definitely tied to this time class with these colons. And in this default constructor, what I want to do is I want to set hour equal to minute equal to second equals zero. Basically, if you don't specify a time, I want it to be time zero. <laughs> whatever that might mean. Of course, you could put all the things you want in there besides this, and it'll still work. OK, we finished the constructor. Now we want to do the um, an, overridden construct, an overridden constructor. So when time is created, 
you might be able to bring in values. Oh, I'm sorry. Colon, colon. And then you do time again, only this time we're going to bring in three integer values. Integer hour, integer minute, integer second. Okay. Actually, um, yeah, this should work. Okay, so let's just set hour equals hour, minute equals the minute that's brought in, and second equals second. Okay, so we have two ways to set the time. Upon creation or later on, you can just... Oh, I'm sorry. That's just an overridden constructor. Now let's find another way to set the time. You can do a control C. What I do is I'll just do a uh, type in time colon colon and hit control V. Oh, that's a bad idea. Never mind. Let's go ahead and start from scratch on that. So time colon colon and then we have these options set time and you put in your parameters integer hour, integer minute, integer second. And of course, we return nothing, so let's put the void out there. That wouldn't work without it. And of course, what do we want to do when we set the time? We just want to set the time just like, it did, just like we did with the constructors. Hour equals hour. Minute equals minute. Second equals second. This is not the greatest uh, code for doing this because we're doing a lot of repeating. Anytime you see repeating things like hour equals hour, minute equals minute, second equals second, you might want to create a function that'll just say, hey, set the time, make it happen. Okay, so we have the set time, we have the constructor set. Now let's do a print time. So we can actually print this to the screen. So that was a void. You can do time, colon, colon, and then you type in print time. Takes in no arguments. And we just print the time. So let's print it, print it out and say, um, see out to the screen. We're going to do hour, hour, so it's going to be hour, usually a colon, minute, colon, and second. It knows to use the hour, minute, and second within our client class object, uh, these hour, minutes, and seconds, because it's scoped to this time object. The only place that these variables are good are within the time object itself. That's very important to understand because somebody else in your program might be using these variables, hour, minute, second. However, this function is scoped to the time class itself. So it knows the hour that is within this time object. Use that hour, okay? Let's test this out a couple different ways. Let's do a time object called uh, my alarm. And we're just going to go ahead and create. Um, we're not. We're not going to set it to anything. My alarm is nothing. It's not set. Let's create another time object called um, work time. And this time we'll set it as say six, fifteen, and zero seconds. Notice the arrows. Let me do that again. Notice these arrows when I start typing six. 15. You see the 2 of 4? So it's telling you you can enter in hour, minute, second. If you click the arrow, you can bring in another time object itself. That's by default. We haven't talked about that yet. And of course, you can bring no arguments. We'll talk about the other two in a few episodes. So 6.15.0, that is a another constructor. It's set in a time, though, during creation. And then we're going to set another time. In fact, we'll just do a comma just to show you, get used to that. Comma. Um, kickball time. And what we'll do is we'll set kickball time later down in the program because it might change, it might depend on things. And then we do kickball time dot set time and we set it to whatever we want. Um, let's do military time here, 1500 on the dot. Okay. Now let's print all these out, see if they worked, see if we have any problems. And I'm just going to print them out one by one and restart the program uh, just due to my time. I'm on my lunch break here. So we see out my alarm, which we never set, so it should be zero. Let's just go ahead and hit F5 to build. Yes, we want to rebuild this, and it should pause too. Uh, build errors. Uh, let's see what we got here. I knew there might have been some. Okay, no operator less than less than matches these operands. Oh, 
well, we can't do that because we didn't overload, which we'll get into. We didn't overload this insertion operator. So we doesn't, it doesn't know how to print my alarm because this syntax here can be overloaded, but we never did that. So instead of printing my alarm, the actual object, what we do is we do my alarm dot, and you see how it says print time? You actually call the function, and it'll do the printing for you. Later down the road, when we learn object overloading, we'll be able to print my alarm without doing a, uh, a function that's tied to it like that. We're going to be able to use th this operator without the dot print time. Okay, so let's try this again. Hit F5. Build it. Uh, more build errors. No operator. Oh, excuse me, since we don't have... Again, like I just said, sorry to be confusing here. Why don't we just call my alarm dot print time? Because print time or uh, the time object itself has no idea how to handle the ex the insertion operator. And I was trying to use it. I was trying to use the insertion operator when I when my when the time itself doesn't know how to use it. But it does know how to do print time. So let's do this one more time. Sorry about those errors. And I might redo this program. So it's zero zero zero, perfectly exactly what we wanted. Now, instead of instead of my alarm dot print time, let's do work time and see if that worked. Dot print time. Hit F five. Recompile. And you have six fifteen and zero seconds. Now you might want to think about doing some fancy um, stuff to put zero zero in there or zero six colon fifteen zero zero. That's all part of the implementation and the definitions you have. You can make that happen. So it did work. Work time was six fifteen just as needed and kickball time dot print time. Hit F five and yes and it should be fifteen hundred on the dot. See how the double zeros are not there? Um, that might be a good assignment too to you know correct that, fix that a little bit. Later down the road, I'll show you how you can use the insertion operator, where you can just do, hey, see out my kickball time, kickball time. But as we noticed just a few minutes ago, um, it's highlighted here. No operator matches the operands. We didn't overload the standard stream, the standard O stream operator, which is this right here. Ah, but next, maybe next tutorial I'll overload this, show you how object overloading works, but I would like to get into for the next one how to separate out all of this class definition and implementation into a whole new file that's going to be over here on the left-hand side, the Navigation Solution Explorer, so that we only need our main function here, and we don't need any of this other stuff. We'll do that next time, but I hope this kind of cleared up a little bit about how to separate the definitions from the implementation here.